Okay, I'm going to be doing a playthrough of one of the scenarios from Flying Colors. But I'm going to be using my Flying Colors light rules. For those of you who are curious about those, you might want to see my other video about Flying Colors and Wooden Ships and Iron Men. So um, if you want to look at the original game being played, this isn't the video for you. I just find with my Flying Colors light rules, the uh, fleet actions play a lot smoother and faster. And they've taken away a lot of the interactivity. Now the scenario that I've decided to try is Menorca 1756 and the reason I chose that one is um, I got a little bit curious about Admiral Bing. I mean he was the only Admiral I believe in English naval history to be shot on his quarterdeck for not doing what the Admiralty and the politicians wanted him to do. So I got curious about the scenario. I set it up and I see that uh, he's got the weather gauge. He has, what, 14 ships? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 ships to the French uh, 12. They start off within almost firing range, so uh, I just got curious to see what uh, I could do with the scenario. So without further ado, let's uh, start this uh, playthrough of the Battle of Menorca, 1756. Okay, I've rolled for initiative, and the French fleet is going first. Okay, this is after the French have moved. The lead ships back sail a bit to try and close up. So the French are trying to close their line. Now the British move. Okay, that's the situation after both sides have moved for turn one. And in my modified sequence of play, each player moves and then you fire. So the British are taking a chance. They're showing their nose and flood fire to the French at long range. But they want to close as fast as they can. Going to be a bit more aggressive maybe than Bing was. So I'll do the firing of the French ships and mark the hits. Now I'm going to be using the logs for this game with some of the markers. So it'll be a combination of logs and markers. So we'll pick up the action after all the French ships have fired. Okay, so this is after the French have fired. We've indicated they fired with little, little fire markers. They did very well, actually. Most of the, um, they were firing at the rigging, and they did cut up the British rigging quite a lot. Many of the ships got two hits, some got one. One actually missed, and one of them inflicted a marine or a manpower hit on the Ramillies. So the British are paying for their rash turn, and, uh, so we'll go into turn two and see what the British can do. Who will move first and what will happen after they move. Okay, it's turn two and the French have won the initiative again. So they could allow the British to go first or they could go first, maybe scoot ahead, close up their line. Not sure what the best strategy would be. What they should do. I think closing up the line might be good. Now some of the British ships, like the Defiance for example, has got... Um, one rigging uh, section knocked out, which means your maximum speed is down. But when you're running before the wind, you got a speed of four anyway. So she'd be down to three, so she couldn't really close. So the British line is going to be a bit broken up here. So I've got some decisions to make. I think the French are going to stay in line rigidly if they can. And uh, they'll back their sails if they have to to slow down the, the front but they'll try and um, close their line. So they'll move first. Okay, this is after the French have moved. The lead ship, the Orphe, decided to move up into the wind. She had to pay two moving points to turn. The other ships closed up as much as they could. These scooted ahead to try and reach the van. So the British are gonna have some hard decisions here, depending on their speed. So I'll look at the British situation and try to uh, see what their options are. Okay, the Defiance there, the lead ship has got some real problems. She charges in ahead. She's going to get slammed by three ships here. Not sure what else she can do. No matter what she does, even if she turns back, she'll have to fight at least these two ships and maybe the Orphe will again, you know, come against her. She's got some decisions, but the British better get their act together soon or else they're going to be in big trouble. I don't think they can go before another heavy turn of fire, so they're going to have to turn their vessels, get
to bring their guns to bear. Okay, this is after the British have moved. I think I did the best I could have under the circumstances. I put the British fleet into line. They've got to get some fire in. And uh, the rear is trying to catch up. And uh, so we're going to be having firing all the way down the line. But I suspect the defiance is going to be a sorry wreck after one turn. But maybe the British will get some good luck and get some good hits on the French ships. So we'll begin firing. Firing, by the way, is still simultaneous. So we'll go ship to ship with the Orphe firing on the Defiance. I'll pick up the video after all the ships have fired. Okay, both sides did about equal damage. The French inflicted some hits on the British and vice versa. Now, some ships are in pretty critical condition. Certainly the Defiance is one of them. She's pretty cut up. A few other ships have lost masts too. They're banging away at each other, and uh, I think they're doing more than Admiral Bing did. So we'll roll for the third turn, see who goes first. Turn three, and once again, the French have the initiative. They're really on a roll here. Probably have them go first, too, because they certainly are dominating the battlefield here. And uh, the Orphe, well, she's beating up against the wind, but... Uh, I think I'll have the French go first. So let's catch the action after I've moved all the French. Okay, this is the situation after the French have moved. And it doesn't look too good for the British. Now the British have yet to move. But you can see the French van has come across and crossed the T of the Defiance. They back sailed, closed up very nicely. And I think the front of the British are in big trouble. Now way over at the rear, that's where Bing is. He has one of the best ships in the game. And when he fired, I think he rolled a, z a one or a zero, hardly doing anything. So the British will move now, and I'm not sure what they're going to do. I think they have to go along with the French and hope that they get better dice. But I think their van is in big, big trouble. The defiance has been reduced by one, and uh, she's going to have a hard time beating against the wind. Let's see what the, uh, the British do. Okay, that's after the British have moved for the third turn. They're trying something desperate here. The Defiance is all cut up. She just barely made it to that square where she may be able to melee with the Orphe. Same with the Portland. These people closed up and the van or the rear of the British line is trying to catch up but uh, at the current rate they won't. So the battle might be decided in the first uh, few turns of this game. We're only on turn three, and uh, a lot of firing is going to happen here. So much is going to happen right here in the van. Now, even in my modified rules, grappling occurs after firing. So all this firing will be done first, and this could cripple one of them. Who knows? Let's find out how this is going to go. Now, we still are obeying the rules of field of fire, so um, Hippopotame here technically doesn't have a shot because it's blocked by its own friendly vessel here. So we've got some interesting fire. Actually, he's blocked too. So let's pick up the action after both sides have fired. Okay, that's the firing after turn three. Now, the British did do some damage to the French, but I've been adding up the hits, and the French have inflicted 44 hits on the uh, British, and the British have inflicted about 24 on the French. So the French are certainly ahead in hits. Now we come to the melee phase, and I'll take a look at the situation and see uh, who wants to melee. I don't think it's in the French interests to melee, but these two ships, British, desperately want to, so I'll roll for the melee and see what happens. Looking at the grappling rules, I realize they cannot grapple because neither of those ships that are involved are adrift, in irons, dismasted, anchored, or fouled. Then you can attempt to grapple, but since these are not, that really ends turn three. And we're on to turn four. See who has the initiative. Okay, this would be a good spot to end part one of the video. So we will be getting uh, turn four.
we don't know who is going to win the initiative. Well, actually, I might as well roll for that, and uh, I'll end the video. We'll be starting turn four. Let's see who has the initiative. The British get a six, the French get a three. So, for the first time on turn four, the British will have the initiative. So, we'll end the video now and pick up the action on turn four.